Hi, this is Luke Bowman. Welcome to my instruction video for Motivation by Corey Wong from his new album, Elevator Music for the Elevated Soul. Meditation is a beautiful track. When I first heard the album, it gave me goosebumps. It's got a great vibe to it and some beautiful playing. Technically, possibly not the most difficult song that we've looked at from Corey. However, to make it sound as good as he does takes a lot of work. The other thing I like about this track is the piano solo. I'm actually working on a transcription for that on guitar. Please stay tuned and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, there'll be a video along showing you how to play that too. As always, there's a link below to the PDF transcription. So get yourself a copy of that. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a like. Also, it'd be great if you would follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I have more videos. Okay, let's get zoomed in and we'll start the lesson. Okay, so we're in the key of E major for this song and we're not using a plectrum. So it's all finger picking going on here, which really helps with the dynamics and the feel of it. So using your thumb for the bass notes and either your index, middle or ring fingers for the higher notes as we go through it. The song is based around this main riff. She repeats higher up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the first cycle of each of those riffs and then it pretty much repeats through the rest of the song. So the first bar goes like this. So we're starting with your first finger on your G string, first fret on your bottom E string. And we're playing second fret bottom E, second fret G string, then up to the 4th fret on your bottom E and your G string and then up to the 7th fret and this time round, only this time I believe we're also adding the open D see that little strumming mark on the tablature he's very quickly kind of so he's not playing all those notes at the same time he's playing it like that so you play it once, again hammer on, slide up like that. That sliding up help gives it some of its dynamics. Sliding up and plucking these two strings here with your first and second fingers. Next bar, you're dropping down to the fifth fret of your E, sixth fret of your G string, and then Bottom E, open, 6th fret of your D, 4th fret of your G, which is picking out part of that E major chord there. So all together, again that chord, this first time round, is kind of plucking it out as opposed to all playing it together, playing it individually. And then we repeat up to that point. And then third fret on your bottom E, fourth fret on your G, second fret on your bottom E and your G, open E, first finger on your G string. So those first few bars
very important to get the timing right, play along with what Corey's doing. Um, also listen to how he's phrasing certain parts of it. He's a lot of sliding in, um, some of them he's hitting a bit harder, some of them he's hitting a bit softer to try and get a nice feel to it. Okay, and then we repeat. But this time we're not doing playing the open D and booking it, we're just sliding straight up. This time we're just sliding straight up from the 4th fret to the 7th fret. So you're only picking that first time. I often give it some vibrato there just to keep the note ringing on. Then we're back to the 5th fret and the 6th fret. And then we have this. So what's happening here, sliding up from the 6th fret up to the 9th fret on your G string and then back to the 4th fret on your G string. So I tend to cheat a bit, slide up, slide back down when I get back to here and pulling off to my first finger so that we can get into the next part. So let's just play that phrase. When we get back down to this B here, hit the bottom E, and then sixth fret on your D string. Again, we're spelling out that E major chord. And then the next part. So what we're doing here, you've got your seventh fret on your A string, and then fourth fret on your D and G. And then you're hammering on to the sixth fret on your D, keeping this bringing on. And then back to the fourth fret on both strings and back to the seventh fret. And then we're sliding up from the fourth fret on your A, third fret on your D, to fifth fret and fourth fret. And then adding the fourth fret on your G. the fourth and the second and then adding the foot and then adding the second fret and then back to your E chord. Open E, second fret, first fret G string. So that whole phrase and then we repeat the phrase again. This time, we're adding the 7th fret on your A string and the 7th fret on your A string for this E chord as well. So instead of the... we are... It's just filling the chord out a little bit. And then we repeat the first part again. But then this time... So, here we've got your 2nd fret, your bottom E, 3rd fret of your D string, sliding up to the G on your 3rd fret, bottom E, and the F sharp on your 4th fret D string, and then we hit the open G string, and then back to the 4th fret, so it's very clashy sounding. And then down. 2nd fret on your bottom E and your D string and then your 2nd fret on your A twice sliding up to the 4th fret on your A 2nd fret on your D string and then bottom E string open so this bit listen to Corey playing it his right hand he's giving it quite a pluck So that bit. Okay, then we repeat the phrase again. To that point, and then we're sliding up from the 6th fret all the way up to the 13th fret here, and 
hitting your bottom E just before it. So. It takes a bit of practice to get that slide. Make sure you're getting the 13th fret. It sounds so good if you miss it. Next part, another little double stop lick. So it's exactly the same as we played down here, but an octave higher. So we're starting here, ninth fret on your G string, and then seventh fret on your B and E, and hammering on to the ninth, leaving that seventh fret ringing. Back to the seventh fret on your B, back to the ninth fret on your G. And sliding up from the 11th and 10th frets on your D and G to the 12th and 11th frets, hitting the 10th fret on your B, and then up to the 11th and 9th frets on your D and G, again hitting that 10th fret on your B, and then hitting 9th fret on your D, G and B, so yeah, E major chord. So. Okay, and then we move up the octave, and the lick goes like this. So we are 7th fret on your A, 9th fret on your B. So this is literally an octave above what we're playing down here. Sliding up to the 9th on your A, 10th on your B. Sliding up to the 11th and your 12th frets, on your A and your B string, and then up to the 14th fret on your A, 15th fret on your B. So, and again, that's all sliding, you're just picking the first one. It's a bit more difficult up here because the fret spacings are changing, so, especially that first one there. It's very easy to slide up in the same shape, but you're just sliding up one fret with this finger, but two frets with this finger. And then you're coming down to the 12th fret on your A, 14th fret. And then 11th fret on your A, 12th fret on your B string. So that first phrase. So I'm plucking here and then sliding back down. And it repeats to there in the next part. So what we've got here, sliding up, same as earlier on, I believe this is a G major 7 chord, or a triad of a G major 7 chord. So we're sliding up from the 9th fret on your A, 8th fret on your D, 10th fret on your G, sliding up 1 fret to the 10th, 9th and 11th, and then down to 9th fret A, 7th fret D, 9th fret G, and then keeping that finger there, 7th fret A, 6th fret D, and the 9th fret still there, so, so that phrase, as you can probably hear it's quite hard to get to that shape, it's not a common shape that we tend to play. Good that it slides in, because you can kind of, if you do, miss something. As long as you get that chord correct, it sounds fine. And then we repeat again. To there, and then we do the same as we did down below. But an octave higher. So 14th fret. Sliding up to your 17th fret on your B and then down to the 12th fret on your B. And then a little lick. Similar to what we've done before in different positions. But 
14th fret on your D string, 11th and 12th on your G and B, hammering on to the 13th on your G string, and then off to the 11th and 12th again, and back to the 14th. And then we're sliding up to the 12th fret on your D, same as we did earlier, and the 11th and 10th on your G and B. Sliding up to the 11th and 9th, on your 10th fret and 9th fret on your D, G and B. So that part. And repeat again. Exactly as we did earlier on. Up to here, and then we're sliding up. Grace note slide up there from the 9th to the 11th. Slide up again from the 11th to the 12th. And again back down from the 12th to the 11th. Very similar to what we did down here. But up the octave. You listen carefully to how Corey's playing that, the way he's phrasing this. Those little grace note slides, which basically means you're hitting the note and then sliding straight. Straight in, you're not. It's very much. Then we repeat again. And then finally, this pattern we had before here, 14th fret, 11th fret, 12th fret. Hammering on with the 13th, hammering on to the 13th fret. And 14th and 11th together, 14th on its own. Very much letting that all ring together. And then we're sliding this whole chord. So from 11, 10, 9 up to 12, 11, 10. This is part of a D major chord. And then hitting the 11th and 10th frets, and then the same major chord. 11th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret, and then hitting the 9 and 10 together, and then back to the 999. That last bit. Okay, and if you listen to the original song, it goes back, goes back to that part, which repeats again, and again up the octave, and then we get the piano solo coming in. Okay, so that's the track. Hopefully you managed to get something from that. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, do let me know. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon with some more videos.